There's something big coming up on your screen. Just settle back and relax, because you're going to get a whole lot of singing, a whole lot of laughing. considering I didn't get any sleep last night, there was something hard under my pillow. This morning I found out what it was, the sidewalk. <laughs> but I had a nice week. Ooh, the week I had, the other night I took Jeannie to the movies. We sat in the theater holding hands. She held hers and I held mine. <laughs> I like it, I don't care what they think, I like it. And I like to get her out, the, out of the house once in a while because she's, she's all, oh, she's working hard, you know. She, she's always rearranging the furniture. It keeps things interesting. When I come home late at night, I never fall over the same thing twice. I help her. I'm going right through these. You pick out what you want. I help her out uh, whenever I can. Like this morning, she asked me to help her with the washing. And by mistake, I put all the laundry in the dishwasher. Now I'm the only guy on my block who's got a 23-piece starter set of uh, jockey shorts. <laughs> Eddie Fisher visiting privileges. <laughs> I 
Hey. My chassis. Hey. Any longer. Hey. <laughs> now maybe Latin. Hey. In the middle. Hey. I'm just a starter. But all the shake it needs to make it and the make it with the shake it needs to be aching. Small my beat. Beat. The memories you get tonight. Fold in the lightly with a dream. You can't beat the memories you get tonight. I Your want to know but and mine. It was a happy day, wouldn't it? A wine man. The memories you get tonight. All made of this. You can't beat the memories you get tonight. Then at the wedding bell, the one house where lovers dwell. These are the dreams we will save us With his blessing from above You can't beat the memories you gave to us Serve it generously with love You can't beat the memories you gave to us One man, yeah, one wife a group of guys that were just absolutely brilliant. Paul Lind, Charles Nelson Riley, and of course, Dom DeLuise. And we did sketches with them with Dean all the time. And they were great because they could move with the punches and his, his approach to everything. <laughs> Answer the following question and you'll win a prize. Who was the first man? My wife told me I was. <laughs> Congratulations. You just won a free dancing lesson from the Waltzing Matilda Dance Studios. Well, I'm sorry, but I, I don't... Uh, I... Come in. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> well, and who are you? I'm your dancing teacher. Oh. And I'm here to put some fun in your life. I'm not interested in dancing lessons. Balderdash. Dancing can make you feel good all over. It depends on how close you hold your partner, right? <laughs> Besides, even if I wasn't, just I don't think you could teach me to dance. Poppycock, I'm the best. I teach the mambo as part of my craft, and I teach the ballet to stay out of the draft. <laughs> <laughs> now let's get on with the lesson. Watch this step. Hello! <laughs> and what's that? A spider on your floor. <laughs> did you kill him? No, silly. I did the flamenco with him. Oh. <laughs> I just love to dance. When I got married, I danced all night long. That's no way to spend your wedding night. You haven't seen my wife. Oh. <laughs> Say, how do you approach the girl you want to dance with? Well, first I take her hand, then I put my arm around her waist, then I pull her real close. Then what do you do? Whatever she'll let me. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> Listen, fella, you should never take advantage of a girl on the dance floor. I shouldn't? No, wait till you get her out in the car. Oh. <laughs> then nobody can hear her scream. <laughs> now, listen, fella, I don't want no dance. Why don't you just foxtrot off, Doc? 
Hmm? <laughs> this fox trot off. <laughs> sure, kick the dancer when he's down. <laughs> you don't know what I've been through. How do you think I got where I am today? I used to be a dance hall boy. <laughs> the victim of love-starved women. For 10 cents a dance, they used to paw me and claw me and stick their fingers in the cummerbund. <laughs> That was an extra nickel. <laughs> One woman held me so close, she steamed the crease out of my pants. <laughs> oh, they were desperate. They'd wear patent leather shoes so they could see out my suit. Oh. Oh. And now here's a girl. You've all, yes, yes. This ain't no girl. Well, George Burns. Now, what are you doing here, George? I was, I was just about to introduce Dinah. Well, that's why I'm here. No. Oh. You tell Dinah not to worry. I'm not going to do any of her numbers. Oh, she'll be relieved. <laughs> I'll think of something else. <laughs> OK. And now I want you all to pull your chairs closer to your TV set, because here's a friend of yours. Here's a friend of everybody's, Miss Dinah Shaw. I just want to say, I just want to say that, uh, well, it's wonderful to have you on this show. Oh, thank you, Dean. You know, everybody enjoys doing this show with you. You make it so much fun for everybody. Is that what they say? That's what they say. Oh. They say that doing your show is wonderful. It's wonderful. So they say. Well, Dinah, having you here is wonderful. It's wonderful. Don't stop now. Go on, tell me. You really have such a relaxed attitude, Dean. Yeah, well, you know how I feel about TV. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take it easy. Take it easy. I've been watching you do that every Thursday night. Well, take it easy. Take it easy. Be doing something right, but anything you can do, I can do easier. Well, I can do anything easier than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. No, yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. All right. Anything you can sing, I can sing sweeter. I can sing anything sweeter than you. No, you can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. No, oh, you can. Sure. 
blackbird Bye-bye I am the devil. I am fiendish, treacherous, rotten, evil. Why am I telling you all this? I already got the job. <laughs> I collect souls. Tonight, I'm going to buy the soul of the most lecherous man in America. The last time I saw her, she wound up on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 1928. That was a good year for drunks. <laughs> All right. Scrappity do. Little music. Well, now just wait till Cynthia gets here. Am I going to be evil tonight? <laughs> What's the HP stand for? Hot pants. Hot pants. <laughs> I've come to buy your soul, brother. You want a soul, brother? Try Sammy Davis. <laughs> hey, fella, you really the devil? I'll prove it. Watch this. <laughs> One third. I'm great at magic, but I'm a lousy bolt. <laughs> I need a man with your capabilities, your drive, your talent. Oh, what do you want me for, anyway? Huh? The truth, the truth. You're Italian, we need help in the kitchen. Hi, Dean. Cynthia! <laughs> Hot pants? Yes. No, no. I, I... Why don't you get lost, huh? Why should I get lost? She can't see me. To her, I'm invisible. She doesn't even know I'm here. I'll show you. Stand by. You see? I'm invisible. <laughs> lucky? Just lucky. She can't see me. She just got lucky. And if you leave the two of us alone, maybe I'll get lucky. <laughs> Look, the lady and I have a big evening plan. A little candlelight, a little wine, then some manicotti. Manicotti? Yeah, then a little cacciatore. Cacciatore? And then after dinner, we go to the couch, cuddle up, and you know what comes after that. Ferracini? <laughs> That's what you call it? You must think the sensuous woman is a cookbook. <laughs> entire fortune of $20 million to Chi-Chi, your French poodle. However you are mentioned in the will, it says you, you'll have to come in every 90 days and change the flea collar. <laughs> uh, same to you, Mr. Sanders. Uh, the widow of the clown, Mrs. Bleepo, is here to see you, sir. Oh, well, you're the widow of the great circus clown. Send her in. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sit down, yeah. Thank Keep you. Sit down. I have your late husband's will right here. Oh, thank you. I just want you to know that I thought your late husband was the greatest clown that the circus ever had. Oh, being Bleepo's wife for 23 years, sharing his life, well, it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. I was proud to be a clown's wife, and I'm sorry I can't control myself, but nothing seems the same without him. <laughs> I'm so lonely, I'd like to end it all. Uh, do you happen to know any good books on suicide? Well, how about what you always wanted to know about sex before, uh, but you were afraid to ask? Huh? Well, what does that have to do with suicide? Well, when you find out what you've been missing, you want to kill yourself. I wish you hadn't said that. I'm terribly sorry. I, I must look a mess. <laughs> oh, where are my cigarettes? Oh, here they are. Hmm. 
Bleepo was always so generous. <laughs> he loved fat people. He had a three-ring heart. <laughs> Those taste like ashes. Hey, we have an ashtray. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I'm so sorry. It's just that I'm so upset. <laughs> The rest of Bleepo's estate goes to you, Mrs. Bleepo. That, that includes his uh, funky clown hat, his funky suit, and what he loved most, his funky underwear. Oh. <laughs> the ones with the trap door that lit up and said, here, come to judge, you know. Oh. <laughs> I if he were a clown to the end. He was real circus. Why, he'd kill for one roasted peanut. I know, that's how he went. The elephant saw the peanut first. <laughs> Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I, I can't see a thing without my glasses. Oh. oh, yes, this seems to be in perfect order. I'll, I'll just sign it right on the bottom. <laughs> there we go. Oh, whoops. <laughs> that ought to do it. Together, we're a couple of swells. Mr. Martin and Mr. Mustel. We give each other love beats and the daisies for our lapel. We're a couple of moths who dream about the golden rods. For we prefer the country far away from the riot squad. Rolling Stones have asked us up for tea. Yes. We don't go there to get there, no siree. No siree. We wouldn't drive up the avenue, but we haven't got a car. We would swing up the avenue, but we lost our one guitar. We would ride on the motorcycle, but we haven't got a bike. So we'll walk. Up the avenue, yes, we'll walk up the avenue, and to walk up the avenue is what we like. We will be up the avenue, but we have We will run the the we ended up as a pointer, like Ed Sullivan. At the end of the fourth week, the show was like number 85. The producer was fired. They were now looking for another producer. And for the next five weeks, they looked for another producer. Meanwhile, I was doing it. And after five weeks, they came up with five or six names. They had a meeting with Dean, and they said, here are the five guys that we would like you to talk to about you know, being the producer of the show. And he said, what are you talking about, pal? What's wrong with Greg? And they said, well, you can't have a producer and a director doing this, you know, an hour variety show every week. And Dean says, well, what the hell do you think he's been doing, pal, for the last five weeks? And that was it. I became the producer of the show. Please. Help me look for my BVD. <laughs> you know, a lot of people drink socially. <laughs> but my pal Ken here, he drinks to forget. That's why the bartenders make him pay in advance. <laughs> I've told every little star you want to get in pictures, meet me at the bar. <laughs> See, mystic, all those words in one note? You got them all in. <laughs> no, you don't have to answer me. I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Ken Poir, Liga, remember the famous words of Twiggy, who once said to her husband, Seek, and he shall find. <laughs>
What is it? Why wasn't it here? I just dropped in because I'm celebrating my 20th year in television. And oh. to commemorate, I would love to have my picture taken with a great television star. Do you mind? Don't mind at all. Okay. Jack, come in, please. Thank you. Right over here, Jack. Ken, baby? <laughs> Some picks you a redhead and a deadhead. <laughs> Billy the Barber. Oh, the Barber. How are you, sir? Fine. Sit down, time for your haircut. Nice to see you again, sir. Ah, good day. Are you looking well? Thank you. Yes, sir. I uh, must tell you, sir, I'm having a lovely time over here. Oh, yeah? Since I came from England. Yes. yes. I'm seeing all the sights. Went to Las Vegas last night, sir. Yeah. Oh, that's a wild place. I saw a show. You know what I saw last night, sir? An authentic Egyptian belly dancer. And I've seen them before in England, you know, they're usually the same, but this fella was unbelievable. <laughs> what a thrill, sir, what a thrill. And I met a girl, sir, met a nice girl here in California. She said, where are you from? I said, I'm from England. She said, terrific. How would you like to go out tomorrow and I'll show you a typical American evening? I said, marvellous. She said, I'll pick you up at nine. We'll start off with Chinese food. We'll climb into my Japanese car. We'll go see Zorba the Greek. Then we'll have Irish coffee at Luigi's Italian restaurant. She said, what's more, we'll do it the American way. We'll go Dutch. I didn't know what to wear. And this weather over here, sir, this weather is fantastic. I can't go to this California weather. Everybody's got a pool. Do you swim, sir? I did last night. My waterbed sprung a leak. <laughs> Lucky there was a lifeguard on duty, you know. Oh, that's lovely, sir. Because <laughs> coming from England, I appreciate this weather, you know, sir, because in England, it's not the best weather in the world, you know. Oh. You know, the best summer we ever had was 1954. It was on a Thursday. <laughs> we never see the sun. Here, you lie out, you get golden brown, you feel fantastic. In England, in the summer, you don't get a tan. You rust. <laughs> People say it really is foggy, as they say. Foggy, it's unbelievable. I didn't get a good look at my mother till I was nine. <laughs> you were over there, sir. Did you find it foggy? Foggy? One night I tried to whistle for a cab and I couldn't find my fingers. <laughs> very good, sir. Very good. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, the weather is very bad over there, sir. Very, very bad. That's why we have no drive-in movies in England, because the weather's so bad you couldn't see the screen. I never saw a drive-in until I came to America. That was a thrill, watching a film in a field. <laughs> Always remember the picture. I saw the Ten Commandments, and I never forgot it, sir. There was a couple in the car next to me, breaking nine of them. <laughs> oh, I never forget that, sir. I'd buy up every schoolhouse in the nation. I'd write upon the blackboard, big and clear. Instead of one, there will be two vacations. And each vacation, six months, twice a year. Now there wouldn't be no school when it was ringing. I'd let you stay at home when it was fair. You'd have free soda fountains. I'd buy you ice cream mountains if I was a millionaire. Bye. 
I'd let you stay at home when it was fair. Oh, you'd have free soda fountains. I'd buy those ice cream mountains if I was a millionaire. Kiss me, kiss me, kiss me, kiss me, kiss me, kiss me. Never on Sunday. Never on Sunday. Fascination for my friend, it's her favorite. Fascination! Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my. Miss, I have a birthday party over here, please. Right away, yes. Over here, Misha, birthday party. I will be there immediately, yes. Misha, birthday party. The birthday party, I'll be right back, darling. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. That's very nice. Thank you very yeah. much. Though. That's all right. I'll take it from here. It's okay. Misha. Yeah. Would you please play something appropriate for our anniversary? The Navy! Navy! Well, that's fine, I told you. It's fine. Fine. You've earned your dollar. This one is on me. I only gave you a dollar. I buy the next round. <laughs> um. He, he looks like the ambassador from Disneyland. Ladies and gentlemen, a most talented actor and wonderful comedian, Mr. Jack Guilford. Thank 
What do you say? Be back in about an hour. Oh, take your time. Oh, now don't you forget, no cigarettes. You know me. When I make up my mind, I make up my mind. I've given up cigarettes for good. And don't you feel better? Better? I feel like a new man. And you look so much better since you've stopped smoking. Thank you. You know, I know I do. It's almost 38 minutes. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. And you know what? I've been putting on weight already. And if you're tempted to take a cigarette, what are you going to say to yourself? Let not tobacco master you. Just ask yourself, what does it do? It stains your fingers, burns your clothes, and makes a chimney of your nose. That's a good boy. Now, uh, it hasn't made you nervous or anything, has it? Nervous? Don't be ridiculous. Run along, dear. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> Dean, Dean, don't, don't ever ring a doorbell like that anymore, huh? What's the matter with it? Don't you feel well? Oh, me? Uh, well, I've never felt better in my life. Oh. I gave up cigarettes, you know. Gee, I wish I could. Well, There's oh. nothing to it. You feel like a cigarette, have a piece of candy instead. Oh, well, I smoke like a fiend. Two packs a day. Two packs a day? That's murder. Listen, here, look what it says in this magazine. What? They tested 200 smokers and 200 non-smokers at the University of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. The 200 non-smokers all have good jobs, are happily married, and have an average of two and a third well-adjusted children. No kidding. <laughs> well, what about the 200 smokers? Every single one of them has dandruff. <laughs> well, that certainly is interesting. Now, now about that house you want to buy. Yes. I I, I took a look at it, you know? The house. Yeah, yeah, that house. You know, I took a look at it, and, well, I, I, I think, uh, I'd think it over if, if I were you, you see? It's in a good, it's in a good location. What is? Well, the house, the house. The house is a very good location, you know? It's not far from the station, and, uh, the gowns are, the grounds are beautiful, you know? Yeah, yeah. But there's a hitch. What's the hitch? Well, confidentially, they're going to build a garbage disposal right across the street, you know? A garbage disposal? Yeah. Mm, lovely. Uh, uh, you really think so? Anyway, let me, let, me, let me tell you some more details about the whole thing. Uh, let not tobacco master you. Just ask yourself, what does it do? What it's did you say? Nothing. nothing. Well, another thing, the road leading up to the house is nothing but sand, sand you know? Yes. And that road wasn't built for cars. It was made for camels. The camels? Oh, camels are so mild. Yeah. <laughs> A good paint job. The yeah. living room was sort of a dingy yellow. Yeah. Ooh, well, yellow. it's more of an old gold. Oh, you know? <laughs> I don't blame you for being happy. Oh, like you're that. lucky. You... <laughs> you're lucky. Yes. Oh, yes. You're real lucky. You got a match? Yes, I, huh? yes, I have a match. Good. Give me a match. Uh... <laughs> Rip Jack. If you want to get a real idea of what I'll draw a little uh, diagram. Yes, mm -hmm. draw a diagram. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see what the house looks like. Oh, yeah, this house like. was at rehearsal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's the house. There's like the yeah. house. Yeah. Would you hold this a second? Would I hold, yes. There. 
Now, see, it's right in this place here. There. Yes. One strong wind, and that house would blow away like a puff of smoke. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I'd forget that house if I were you. What do you think, huh? But not to back a mask to you, just ask... It's a big it investment. Ask yourself what it can do. It just... Well, Jack, you got to make a decision. <laughs> oh! Don't touch me, Dean. You're touching me. You know... Please help me, Jack. please. Jack, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stupid. Yes. I'm no. Pretty, you're off cigarettes, and I've been smoking. I should have known better Just than that. I was just thinking, little, you want to stop smoking? So I'm going to help you. Yes, sir. Hack, say, I'm, no, oh, no more cigarettes. No, no, there, no, there. no, You, 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 you. Jack, what's wrong? What are you doing? Wait a minute. Don't Jack, leave me alone. don't go berserk, pal. What are you doing? What? Stay away from no, me. No, no, no. No, 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 no. no, 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 no.
I wrote a letter to the network and uh, to all the executives, the presidents and everybody, and uh, on behalf of uh, Dane and, of course, me. And I told them that we had a great time, that they were wonderful to us, that uh, everybody treated us with style and dignity and gave us a lot of space. And we were truly grateful for everything that ever happened. And the reason for that letter was I figured out it didn't take a mental giant to figure this out, that every other show that I ever remember that was canceled, ever, the star of the show, the producer of the show, the director of the show said, the network, they didn't give us this, and they put us in a bad time period, and they didn't give us a chance to do this, and they were terrible to this. And I said, Dean and I want to be one of the few people that wanted to say thank you. We had a great time. You were wonderful to us, and thank you so much. Now you must wake up 